time in Callaway. This is a 1924 Bentley 3, 4 and a half. So originally it came out of the factory as a three litre car. Uh, and then it's been enlarged to four and a half litres, which is a fairly easy process. Um, you do it simply by changing the block. So you can take the camshaft off the top, uh, leave the crankcase where it is, swap the block over, and then you've got a four and a half litre car. So great way of getting extra power on the car. They really do shift. This is the same model uh, that went to Le Mans and won in 1924. So this is a 1924 car, chassis 922, engine number 902. The first owner was uh, a captain, Captain F. Butler. Um, he had the car through towards the end of the 20s and by 29, the car had done 30,000 miles. We've got that mileage because in 1929, it went into the factory for a new front axle as you had a front end, uh, head on collision. Unfortunately, this car, like many of them, uh, what happened was the bodies were rotted out. Um, they tended to be aluminium over ash. The ash frame rotted. Uh, and quite often people found that the cars were very expensive to run. Uh, and she ended up in a breaker's yard. That was in the 50s. Um, all the parts were rescued uh, and then wind forward um, through into, it was 20 odd years ago, um, that somebody actually put all the parts together uh, and put this rather nice Van den Plaar body on. So it's an original Van den Plaar body, uh, which had been separated from, from its original car. Obviously it was then refettled inside and then put on this car. So that's what we have today. I was sharing a pit garage when I was racing at Silverstone. And one of the other guys in the garage was racing a Bentley. And we went over and we had a chat and I said, I've always wanted one of these. Um, anyway, we exchanged details. Um, I just happened to ring him up completely on spec. And at the time, his brother was selling his car and this is it. She needed a little bit doing to her. She had lost her original sloper carburettors, which are the really beautiful carburettors which were on this car. So we put the slopers back on and also we put the magnetos back on the car as well because she'd been converted to distributor and coil. So she's now running exactly as she should. This car is indeed called Bob. Particular idiosyncrasies? I don't know really. These cars run very much factory standard. That is the idea. So you can still buy parts with the BM Bentley on, and they just go straight on the car. They all run pretty in a pretty similar way. Um, heavy to drive, you've got to be slightly careful and think about brakes, especially with modern traffic. Um, but these cars, when set up well, you can spend a day touring at 50, 60 miles an hour, no problem at all and one of the cars which races, he's got his up to 127. Oh no, this, this is a working car, so we've had lots of fun with her. She's done laps around Le Mans circuit, which was huge fun. Uh, we drove her down to Italy over the Alps, and she's done numerous trips down to France and through Spain. So um, she works for a living. The, the single thing, a little bit all encompassing, I would say is the design of the engine. Designed in 1919, it's uh, an engine with four valves per cylinder, uh, twin spark plugs per cylinder and an overhead camshaft driven by bevel gears uh, through a turret on the front. It's, I, I don't know of another engine like it. Um, the design was revolutionary then and it still is revolutionary now. These engines pack an incredible punch and that's the reason why they were racing. So they are amazing bits of engineering. She really is now one of the family. So um, I think she's, she's going to be with us for the, for the long term. Um, and there are numerous members of the Bentley Drivers Club who are in their 80s and 90s and still driving these cars. So I hope I'm one of them.